The Bible says that God, Jesus purposed to stay there longer. And so he did. And so he started to slowly go back and he said, okay guys, come on, let's go. And, and, and then the disciples asked Jesus, well, what are you going to do? He's, and Jesus said, he's asleep. I'm going to wake him up. And, and they said, well, if he's asleep, he's okay. Let's, let's go somewhere else. No, I'm telling you, he's dead. What? This ain't the Jesus I used to know. How does it ever felt like that in your life? That you, you, <laughs> This is not the Jesus I used to know, man. <laughs> Especially when you're a babe in the Lord, it seems like Johnny on the spot. The Lord is there, just like that, bang, good things are happening. All of a sudden, God seems distant. He's not hearing me. Like it seems like my prayers are going to the ceiling, ricocheting back and hitting me on the head and giving me a backache. I mean, it's just a terrible thing. And so, you know what Thomas said? God in Thomas, same Thomas. You know what he said? Let us go so that we can die with him. Pastor <laughs> Ron's ministry was not operating at that time. He's one of the discouragers that you were talking about. How many would like to have a Thomas with you that said, let's die, let's go over there and die with him along with us? No. Oh, I said, you're fired. Don't talk to me like that. Who needs a dead head like you around? He, he said, let us go so we can die with him. What a meathead. And Jesus, watch this, watch this. Jesus, in the midst of 12 moronic, depressed, boo-hooing, crying disciples, two women down his neck pointing fingers at him, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. He had an entire community of professional Jewish mourners. Professional. Professional? Oh, no, they, they didn't even know him. But that's just the way they did. You just, you know, it's called... Job. You rent a mob, you know, you rent them with you kids. These are a crying mob. You gotta rent some professional mourners. And they they're all crying in there. Nobody knew it, but right thing to do, let's just cry out a bunch of now in the midst of all of this, twelve guys that are and then you got two ladies that are on your case, and you got a bunch of people depressed. Jesus had to resurrect the man from the dead as the death of four days. I mean there's something wrong with that picture. It's not an area of faith. Is that right, Brother Ron? There's not a whole lot of faith here going on. <laughs> not a lot of faith going on with the day. Now, I got yeah, I back off, God. I got that. <laughs> In the midst of this, Jesus weeps. Remember that the Bible said, Jesus wept. How many know that's the shortest verse about Jesus wept? But that was the case. That was the incident. Jesus told him, I'd weep too. I have to face this. I, I don't think Jesus was worried about Lazarus being dead because he already knew he was going to rise from the dead. And Jesus, I thank the Father, said that you've already heard me. But when you're surrounded with negativity and people to, crying to that degree, <laughs> what are you going to do? Cry with them. <laughs> but one thing is for sure. I'm while their soul was not rejoicing, but they were not praying, and they were not giving thanks, there's a man in the midst, his name is Jesus, Amen. who never had a broken moment of fellowship Amen. with his heavenly Father, Amen. and knew, knew full well what was going to happen. Yeah. So they said, take the stone away. Oh, but Lord, he sticketh already. Who cares? He sticketh already. He's going to come out. He's going to dismount. Shut up already. You know what? When you pray and ask God to intervene and He asks you to take steps of faith, don't argue with Him. Amen. There's a step of faith for them to move the stone. He's been dead four days. He stinketh already. So let's give it up. So but when God gives you a directive, you move. just do it. Move the stone. The, the, the stone of doubt and fear and unbelief. This is a whole other message, by the way. But anyways, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, that you've already heard me. Despite of everything that surrounds me here right now, thank you that you've already heard me. All that to say, we come back to the main point, that never was there a moment of broken fellowship between Jesus and his heavenly. And that's the same with us. Take advantage of it. The third thing, 
you know, I'll never, you realize that tonight I will not get to my message. I will not get to my message. I've never got to my message. This is a huge, this, yeah, this is a huge sidebar, 45 minutes so far of sidebar. I hate to see what the message is going to be in this. Anyways, in everything give thanks. One of the most devastating dispositions in America today is ingratitude. Yes, when you're an ingrat, you whine constantly. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you listen to a whiner, ask them the last time they gave thanks for anything. They'll say, well, I don't know. Well, right now might be a good time for you to start thanking God. <laughs> well, for what? Well, would you like to have my list? I'll give you my list. <laughs> This is the third secret. I don't want to use the term secret as though it's some kind of a, some kind of a, uh, a Gnosticism, uh, the special elite truth that we have just for a special group of people. No, not secret in that sense, but hidden truth that most people do not know and don't have is the ability to be thankful. Amen. In every single circumstance, to give thanks. Now, you're not giving thanks for evil when it befalls you. But you're giving thanks to God by principle. So that the giving of thanks, again, sets a proper stage for God to work in. How many know that whining and complaining is not an atmosphere of faith? Is that true? true. Nope. A person that whines, complains, criticizes, is not an atmosphere of faith. There's no rejoicing there and there's no prayer there because there's no faith there. But faith cannot work in the midst of ingratitude and in the midst of whining. Faith can't work there because that, those are not ingredients that are demonstratively of faith. Faith is grateful. Faith recognizes the answer of Jesus says, Father, I thank you. And I just not say that, but you've already heard me. Gratitude. Somebody say it. Gratitude. Gratitude. One Gratitude. more time. Gratitude. Gratitude. One more time. Gratitude. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. It's a divine principle. That means that what's now? The Christians in the early apostolic church that were losing their families. How many know that they had to be grateful to God? for their eternal salvation for them to get up again the following Sunday and back to church again. Amen. Even if they lost their mom and dad, lost their aunt and uncle, lost their grandma and grandpa, lost their children to the evils of persecution by Rome at the time. And by the Jews for that matter. They had to be a grateful group. A group of people who gave thanks. I'm giving you the three principles here <clears throat> that are three elements that will help you to be more competent in your Christian walk. I hope you're learning. Are you learning anything tonight? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Now listen closely. And I'll get to you in just a minute. Uh, you can put that somewhere in your notes to help me be more competent. I need to rejoice. I need to pray. And I need to be those are the dispositions of the heart that prepare you for success in your Christian walk and witness. You've got to rejoice evermore. You've got to pray in constant communication with God. You've got to give thanks. These are three elements that are desperately needed for you to be competent. I'm trying to give you as much information and ammunition for you to load into your competency package so that it will give you the energy and the capacity and the knowledge to be competent in your Christian walk. Are you getting this tonight? Yes. Amen. 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 That's good stuff, George. Yes, it is. That's good stuff. And that's why I'm here. That's why you're here. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right.
exactly right. I can't get this. And, and I'd like for you to really take notes uh, of this, what we've been talking about. Get the CD, get whatever you need. Just make this a life study, not just a Bible study. Make this a life study for yourself. These three principles. You know. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing and give that prayer with you. Thank you, Dad. <coughs> but it gives you the proper heart and soul, character, personal disposition, your heart disposition to make you competent in your Christian life. This, these are the Es this is the essence. Those three is the essence. It is the fuel in your tank. It is the energy. It is the octane. The recipe. The recipe. The octane for your gas. The octane in your gas for your motor to make you competent in your Christian walk and witness. Please get a copy of this CD of mine. Don't make it a Bible study. Make it a life study. Next week I'll give you the definition of competence. I'll give you synonyms on it. And then I'm going to break it down for you over the next few weeks on how to, uh, how to measure uh, your accomplishments in that is the Lord. So, the very first measure I'd like for you to take tonight, this is part of your life lesson tonight, okay? Part of your, you know what? I think pastors ought to be the best life coaches around. Amen. This is life coaching tonight. This is a good term. Are you getting that tonight? Yeah. The best life coaches and pastors is to put you on the narrow road and straighten down the way, the road of righteousness. Now watch now. Please put us down in your life lesson tonight. This is your first life lesson. And if others that are normally here weren't here, get a copy of the CD, but then make sure they get thank you, darling. You're so sweet. Very comfortable. I'm giving thanks. I'm praying for you. Bless you. I'm happy. Man. That's holy water right there. All right, thank you. Now, the first measurements, put down, the first measurements for my level of com competence, the first measurements of my level of competence is my heart disposition. Being graced with so joy. The first part. Somebody give her the first part. No, I got, I'm up to confidence. Now start. <laughs> yes, the, 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 the first. Uh, In my heart's the left, the, disposition. My level. Yeah, of confidence is to have a heart disposition. That's the first thing you need to have <coughs> in, in your measuring is is the rejoicing, the prayer, communication with God, and the gratitude. Now, if you lose a sense of competence, check one of those three up. Make sure that you've got those three in your tank. Make sure you got those three in your tank. How many remember the old Esso or Humble Oil uh, gas? Remember they used to have it? Put a, a tiger. Yeah, put so. a tiger in your tank. <laughs> if you have these three things working for you, put these are, this is the, a tiger in your tank called rejoicing, praying, and giving thanks. I'm not kidding you. These are profound principles of life to help you succeed in your Christian walk and witness. These are tremendous, tremendous insights. And I ask you again the question. Have you ever seen me miserable? No. Has anybody ever seen me unhappy? No. Has anybody ever seen me whining? No. Complaining? No. Criticizing? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. You've never seen me in the molly grubs. Is that correct? I mean, oh, I have reason to be if I wanted to. Yeah. Absolutely. But I refuse to go there. Right. Because I have friends like you that I need to support. I can't support you when I'm down. Shining example. We all have to be 
shining example for the world and for one another. I ask you this, have you ever seen me to where it seemed to you that I was out of touch with God? No. no. Have you ever experienced Pastor Bellet in a moment where you felt that I was out of touch with God? No. no. Have you ever seen me expressing a lack of gratitude? No. Complaining? If I am who I am right now, if I am where I am, if I have what I have, these things have not come to me by whining, whining, whining complaining, criticizing, and being out of touch with God and being miserable rather than joyful. The, it doesn't happen. God cannot trust you with the greater unless you show him how faithful with your with the lesser. How faithful you are. Does that make sense? Yes. If you're faithful to small things, he'll make you master over many. Amen. So God cannot give you the greater until he sees you faithful with the lesson. This, these three things combined here, these intrinsically, knitted together, inseparable, should be your song. It should be your prayer. And it should be your reason for things. These three things will bring you both within. These three things will start you off on the road for competence in your Christian life. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the brother you want. Now, I was just going to say that, like when you're in school, a teacher's teaching you a test, that's when he's the most quiet. So when Jesus is giving you a test, he's not going to be there talking to you. He's wanting you to concentrate on your test. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. That's good. All right, so this will be also on YouTube. Is that correct? Is that correct, Ms. Kim? That is correct. That is correct. And if you have some friends, some neighbors, some relatives that you feel can benefit from this, don't be selfish with it. Pass it on. Tell them, hey, go on to the YouTube, check out April 26, 17. Check out that message on the beginning of a... <laughs> A life course on competence in your Christian walk and ministry. And uh, let it be a blessing for them as well. We love you, those of you who are watching by YouTube and those listening by CD. Uh, may this time together be a tremendous blessing for you. Let's bow our hearts in the word for shall we? Father, you have been so faithful to us. What can we say but thank you tonight? Thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness to us. I know that we go through some serious times of trying, difficulties, challenges, but they are not permitted by God to destroy us, but to strengthen us and to show us how faithful you are so that we can learn more and more to lean upon you. But Father, we need the proper dispositions of the heart, the attitude of the heart, the conviction of the heart. And it begins, Lord, with having these three elements all knitted together, interwoven, eternally woven, intrinsically powerful. You've given these things to us. And these are gifts from God. They're part of the office work of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And through all these things that we go through in life, for us to maintain a level of competence, for us to maintain a level of stability in our life, we must have that disposition with these three elements in it. The early apostolic church had it, we need it today. And so, Father, we pray that tonight we will allow our hearts to receive that blessing of such. And that the choice is ours to trust God no matter what. As every head is still bowed and every eye closed. If you want to raise your hand to be included in the closing prayer right now, please raise it and I'll ask God to give you again that measure of these three elements. God bless you wherever you are. Jesus, for these who have raised their hearts and hands before you, 
I thank you for my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, those watching by YouTube, those listening by CD. Father, tonight, in Jesus' name, bless them <laughs> with a, an openness to the Holy Spirit. Bless them with an understanding of what has been shared here tonight. Lord, there has been a tremendous load of instruction and insights given here tonight to be able to instruct us in the way of righteousness, in the way of salvation. And so, Father, we pray that as we now take this first life course lesson tonight, and we pray, God, tonight, that we will allow the Holy Spirit to nudge us with a little whisper and say, this is the way, walk in it. And the joy of the Lord, a constant communication with God, and an attitude filled with gratitude. May it be our portion tonight in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, where we have doubted you, we've lost communication, or thought we had lost. But tonight, Father, we joyfully reconnect our hearts to have that a clear, clear definition of prayer in our lives. And our soul is never out of touch with God. And God never out of touch with our soul. <clears throat> Bless these, we pray. Your beloved children, in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Give the Lord another good time.